Hello everybody and welcome back to Run It Up, Run It Up number 74. We are here today playing some 50 cent $1 no limit Texas Hold'em on ultimatepoker.com and this is the very first hand. We're in there. Ace-9 offsuit defended against Bink over there in the cutoff. Made it to the top pair which is pretty sweet. Gonna start here with a check and a call right into the poker action. No time for nonsense today I suppose. Don't worry. I always find time for nonsense. <laughs> I, I, I think a no-nonsense run-it-up would make for a pretty bad run-it-up, so don't worry. Plenty of nonsense. Anyway, our opponent checking back this turn card is pretty good news for us. Probably means we have the best hand. At this point, I think it's unlikely that this opponent will call us with worse, right? We bet. <clears throat> is he ever going to call us with queen nine? Never, right? So my plan was to check and give him an opportunity to bluff. He says, no, thank you. And I say, all right. I'll be taking your six dollars or what have you. So here we are, grinding, grinding it up, playing a little bit smaller than we probably are bankrolled for by our by our metrics at least. I still haven't adjusted the run it up accounting. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's very close. I will get around to it. I just have to go back through all the live streams and uh, add that up. It's very close to this number though, so don't get too upset with me, please. But I'd really like to try to put like a dedicated run it up effort. You know, we'll try to put people in cages, try to go on a little bit of a heater. I feel like we've been like at this level for a couple of weeks now. I want to break through. Let's get to the 2K mark. Try to do some work. You know what I mean? So we'll see if uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see how that goes for me. Besides that, it's great to be back in Vegas. Sorry for yesterday's video coming out so late. I tried to upload it, didn't work. No one really cares what the excuses are. I don't care, you don't care. It was, uh, I tried, it didn't work out. Looks like King High takes that one down. All right. Uh, so yeah, I tried, I uploaded it when I went to bed at five in the morning and it didn't uh, post for some reason. When I woke up, it hadn't come out yet. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And then uh, I tried to re-upload it. And again, didn't work for some reason. Uh, actually, that was a, a much weirder bug. The first one lo endlessly processed. It didn't. It didn't upload for some reason. And then the second time, it, I came back and it said it was deleted, which was also very weird. So uh, yeah, I uh, sorry about that. But uh, hopefully, this video will come out relatively on time. We uh, raised the button here against this fella, and we got cold called by the voluptuous woman in the red over there, who's now decided to bet nine dollars. I'm not folding yet. Ace King, pretty good hand. Can't be folding Ace King just because this person cold called and bet. Am I concerned? Of course, I'm a little concerned, but you know, I'm not super concerned as of yet. Not surprised to see our opponent check here. I mean, you know, you would imagine that our opponent doesn't have too many flushes, right? I mean, that would be a kind of a weird way to play a flush. Uh, I think I am going to bet here, though, just for a little bit of protection, and uh, maybe he folds better than Ace-King every once in a while. Ace on the river is pretty nice. We lose to Ace-Jack and Ace-8, but it would be kind of weird for him to cold call with, uh, with Ace-8 in the small blind. So I actually think I can kind of confidently value bet this. Something like this? How does that work? If our opponent shoves, we would just fold, but I think we have the best hand here. All right. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm excited to be back in Las Vegas. I guess I should actually tell him that. Uh, Pastor, wait. Before I say thank you in chat, I don't want the voluptuous red woman to be upset with us, you know? But, uh, yeah, here we are. Ace King. Did it. Got it, got it done. I mean,. Uh, I thought when our opponent cold called like that, I mean, he definitely have a hand as good as like King Jack. Uh, King Jack is a very reasonable hand for him to have. Uh, I guess we min raise. Uh, I feel like Button's probably a stickier type, so I want to make it three dollars if I can ever get there. All right, <laughs> come on now, cooperate with me, software. Nice to be back. How about that? Oh okay. yeah. There you go. That's a nice thing to say, right? Nice to be back. It is nice to be back. It's true. I'm not even lying. Uh, you know, eh, it's true. Nice to be back. All right. So, 
<laughs> I feel I feel like I I really wish that I could share some of the you know I don't know the I really find those like theoretical how I should respond to people conversations very interesting you know because from both the aggressor and the defender right because as the person that always had to do the approaching all my life and be like hey important person it's really nice to see you over there I had a lot of practice obviously you know and then to be on this side of things uh I enjoy the anyway. <laughs> if you've never seen it run up before you have no idea what the fuck i'm talking about but uh trust me hey uh i've got this stack on my lap here i'm excited to point out uh this is the dear j carver emails this is the dear j carver emails from the last like uh i don't know exactly but i want to say it's the last like six weeks <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous it's pretty ridiculous not counting the ones that i didn't print or or didn't uh, include here. There were some that I, I actually kind of scanned through. Hopefully nobody sent me anything critically important to this email address because if you sent me a message like, Dear Jay Carver, help, you would uh, not be getting much help from me, I'm afraid. But so awesome. If you've got a question for me to read on Run It Up, email me, Carver at gmail.com, and I might answer your question. I might even answer it well. It's possible. You know? Just don't write me a question like, you know, hey, Jay Carver, how do I play poker? Uh, you know, those questions never get answered. I can't answer those questions for you, you know? Meaning of life questions I can do. But how to play poker, that's boring. <laughs> that is boring. Speaking of boring, looks like there are two limps ahead of us, and we've got pocket fours here. So we could limp, that would be all right. But I think we're actually just going to probably just raise and just end this little game right now. It'll probably be heads up. Once in a while, it's not heads up. But uh, we win this pot preflop some percentage of the time, which is also cool with me. And I think we're probably a favorite to win postflop certainly more often than we lose it. Going to bet here, $6 seems fine. If our opponent contests in any way, we probably just say, all right, you got it this time, kid. But he says, no, thank you. And I say, all right, thank you. <laughs> That's what happened there. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of the UK, and I'm quite excited to go back uh, now that I've, you know, now that we've got a relationship, you know, you UK fans and I. I'm very excited to go back and uh, hang out. I'd love to do a tour. I'd love to, you know, show me around a little bit. It would be great. Uh, I'm really excited about this, but I've never been as excited to be a fan of the UK life over there than I am as of today. And uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you might be guessing why the perhaps most attractive person on the planet has kind of came out today, Mr. Tom Daly. How exciting is that? You know, I mean, obviously, on a sincere level, who cares? Doesn't matter. But on a like, you know, 12 year old girl level, how exciting is that? That made that made headlines around my house. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I made headlines around my neck of the woods. So there's that. Also, I had this uh, kind of a kind of a cool idea. I I actually somebody in uh, somebody in the YouTube comments. Look at all these nits, by the way. We're not on a heater. They're all just out of our way. We're just bulldozing it. That's a new one. It's like the bulldozer claw. The bulldozer tiger claw. <laughs> sure, whatever, Jay Carver. Whatever, Jay Carver. Bitch. What are we talking about? Talking about the UK fans, Tom Daly. I was transitioning into something else from there. <laughs> I was all going so smoothly, and now it's uh, off the tracks entirely. Oh, right, I remembered. So the uh, I mentioned yesterday that I was going to play this poker tournament over the weekend, ten thousand dollar buy-in, uh, re-entry, uh, and all of that. And uh, I got tenth last year. I'm actually looking forward to playing some poker. I haven't played serious tournament poker in a long time, six months. Probably it was the last time ago that I played serious tournament poker. Actually, any tournament poker. Uh, I would say probably the 100K during the summer, so July. So it's been like five months for me, and I'm jonesing. I'm jonesing. Can't wait to get in there and uh, and fire it up. But uh, I was I was thinking that it would kind of be awesome slash fun to... Uh, oh, that reminds me of something else that we have to do today. Oh, I'm just thinking of all these things slightly too late. I might do an edit. I might do an edit and put it at the beginning. You guys won't even know. <laughs> well, you'll know now, but you wouldn't know beforehand. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. But uh, So I'm playing this tournament on Friday, and I was thinking that it would be awesome to give away some sweats to the run-up warrior land out there. But I'm not really sure how to go about it. I'm not really sure what to how I should distribute these. So let's say I have five 1% pieces, slivers, 
of the five one percent slivers of my action. I will give away to five run it up warriors scattered throughout the globe. As annoying as it will be to pay you your one percent, I will I will follow through with it. Maybe not five. I don't know. I'm willing to to bend a little if you're if you've got good ideas. So if you've got an idea for how I can give away five five pieces of me or pieces of me to people, how should I how should we pick our ultimate run it up warriors? You know, I, I someone suggested in the comments pulling two Dear J Carvers and then giving one to the winner. But what if they're both bad? You know, I I don't want to I don't want to give money away to people that you know aren't deserving. Maybe I should give one percent away to every like the best Dear J Carvers of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's not a bad idea. I could give a one percent away to the best Dear J Carvers, but someone today is gonna win, not even know it. All right, I like that idea, but I'm open to other ideas. So if uh, if you want to win one percent of me, apparently you can write me an email, dearjcarver at gmail dot com, and uh, if it's uh, really good through only metrics that I will determine, <laughs> if it's good, you might win one percent of me in a ten thousand dollar buy in tournament. First place will be a million dollars. You know, I could be sending you 10,000 sweet dollars all for nothing. You ran it up from nothing to something. It's the American dream or dream of your region, perhaps. I'm not sure about that. Is it the, is it like the Bulgarian dream? Is it like a very similar to the American dream? It probably is. We talked about this before, I think. But uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you could run it up. It would be great. All right. Let's pull some Dear J Carvers because, God, there's a lot of them. And a lot of them are really good. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, but I don't want to read that right now. But it was a good question. Uh, oh yeah, we are definitely defending here, especially against the the red hot voluptuous, volu <laughs> voluptuous sorceress over there. Look at us flopping flush draws. Probably gonna start with a check and a call. Half pot, don't scare me none. Call. Three or four would be cool. Ten or five would be cool. Spade would be hot dog. Unfortunately, it looks like no hot dog for us here. Pretty crappy turn card, all things considered. Board pairs, top card, the most likely card to have helped him. Helped him. If our opponent bets anything reasonable, we would have just folded. Okay, so at this point, if our opponent has a hand like a pair, I wouldn't expect him to fold a pair, right? People don't usually get in the habits of folding pairs. However, I'm only risking six to win 14. If he has King Jack, he has, uh, you know, 9-10, any kind of thing like that. I thought that there would be a, a good chance he'd just let that one go. This little raise on the river, I find quite, uh, I don't know what to make of it. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's just, you know, what do you got over there, bud? It just doesn't make any sense. What? What? I mean, he has to have a full house, but we're already raised so small in the river with a full house. You'd raise bigger, wouldn't you? We don't know our opponent yet, so I'll give him a little bit of credit. But, uh, you know, we know that our opponent is very well-dressed and uh, kind of attractive for a 55-year-old woman. You know? That's all we know about our opponent over there. So I don't think that's enough to call. But I'm very tempted. I was very... Not call. Obviously not call. <laughs> Calling was not, in the, was not in the decision path. But I was considering giving him the business because, you know, come on. What's the story you're trying to tell me here, Norman Clyde? You're trying to tell me you have a full house? You just check back, turn, raise river, $16? Come on. Be real, you know? Uh, I don't know about that. Dear J. Carver. Short question is the subject. All right. Dear J. Carver, have you thought about doing an audio podcast? There aren't too many good poker podcasts out there, and I'm sure you do a good job with it. Thanks, Chris. Well, no. I haven't really thought about it, but uh, I don't think I'm an audio kind of guy. I think I'm a video kind of guy, you know? I wish I could go back in time through anything I ever had to do in any kind of capacity and could recast it in video format because I feel like it's much better for understanding purposes. This is a great situation, by the way. On the button, 9-8 offsuit, deep stacked, in position. How much more could you ask for? Dream scenario. Oh, my God. I'm not doing a preemptive bink bell because we've gotten fucked by that so many times. But uh, we are definitely going to war here, kids. Don't matter what he has, we will probably be we will be a favorite unless he has top set, which would be unfortunate and unlikely. I don't think it really makes a difference what we raise here, right? Because it's not you know it doesn't really make a difference if we had you know our, all of our sizes will be right around this amount. If he has an overpair, he's all in. If he has ace king, probably folds. If he doesn't fold, I'm even more happy about that because ace king is not doing too good against us. 
I think uh, I like our size all in all. All right. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a hand to do anything about, but we did get it done. So there's that. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I, I feel like th if I was truly wanting to express myself to somebody, like, I feel that I, I'm obviously okay with audio, I'm okay with different formats, but I think the strongest format for me is on camera. Just because I'm a, you know, you guys know. <laughs> you guys know exactly what I mean. I feel like if you li if you just listen to me, you miss half of what I'm trying to say, you know? Maybe not half, but you miss a pretty sizable portion. Never mind, like, interviews. One of the things that bothers me the most about poker media and media in general, not just poker media, that's too strong, but poker media is definitely guilty of doing it. But you feel like you give an interview, especially me, because I say so much, it has to be cut down. But when they cut down words, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to create a narrative. You're not, you're not preserving my meaning necessarily, or you're not preserving what I meant to say. You know, and I think that for me, if you've got a question for me, ask me a question. I'll answer the question directly, and you can make your own decision for it. I like to stand behind the words that I, that I say. Although I do say some things, obviously I misspeak from time to time. But if I say something with conviction and purpose... And uh, in an interview, it comes off mediocre or wishy-washy or just like equal. Uh, I don't like that. I like that on camera, you know exactly how I feel. You can see, sense the level of, of intensity. It's a lovely format. What would I have done 40 years ago? I would have done radio, probably. <laughs> I would have, I guess I would have done radio. Uh, you know, I could have still been in television 40 years ago. It just would have been a tougher road tougher thing to get started in. I'd be your local news anchor. And now here's Jay Carver with the weather. Jay Carver, how are you? <laughs> how do you guys like my, my perky 1960s Katie Couric impression, huh? <laughs> huh? That was not bad, I thought, you know? I thought it was not bad. If this guy barrels this twice, we'll be considering sticking around. We do have ace high and a gut shot, which is kind of sweet. He lets us get there for free. And by get there, I mean see the river. Once again, I feel like if this person has any hand better than ours, he probably doesn't fold. Maybe if he has like ace seven, he'd fold that. But uh, I feel like he's probably not folding better than us and not calling with worst. That would be impressive. He's calling us with king queen. Doubt it. So once again, much like the earlier decision, we will check and then we'll make a decision. So uh, I would doubt that this opponent would have a hand as good as a jack here and check back on turn. That would be some pretty bad value missing on his part, generally speaking. You could have a nine. That would make a lot of sense. But I think that uh, I think I'm fine calling here. We probably win this often enough that we break even. You know, he could never be bluffing here, which make this really bad. But I think that uh, I think it's fine to call there on the river given the price. We certainly lose often enough to hands that beat pocket that beat fives. Because he'll correctly identify our hand strength is right around like a five or like an ace high type of hand. So if he has anything better than that, he's very likely to be able to correctly, uh, yeah, that's right, <laughs> to correctly snipe the value bet there. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty uh, softball-y value bet there if he has a hand like two sevens. And so, um, not that he's doing anything wrong. It's just true, right? Our hand looks very, very much like a five. So. He can bet pretty liberally with a hand like two sevens. And I think what we do with a hand like ace three, we make a decision. <laughs> I don't know. We make a decision. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that voice is. That was like my uh, Italian my Italian suit salesman. Yeah. Something like that. I, I don't know. It don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what is going on today? I'm very excited to be back in casting. Yesterday I was exhausted, you know? I was exhausted, it was a travel day, it was 3 in the morning. I, I didn't have all this pent-up energy here. And I have a lot of pent-up energy here. And we're only 20 minutes in, let's see if we can maintain that. Dear Jay Carver, uh, Lots of words. Do you think you should play drunk or intoxicated poker? Your biggest fan from Ireland, Blazy B. Oh. Hello there, Blazy B. A lot of Ireland, a lot of fans from Ireland. I'm, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. 
uh, whether or oh, your question is whether or not you should smoke and play poker. I think it's up to you. I mean, I when I was younger, I never indulged in any intoxicating substances, and I had lots of friends who did, and they all played poker and seemingly claimed to be fine. I feel like if I were to if I were to if I were to smoke and then go play a poker tournament or vape or whatever, if I were to be any kind of intoxicated and then went and go play poker, I I don't know, man. I feel like it would really mess me up. But maybe you get used to it. Depends on what exactly you smoke, how much you smoke. I mean, listen, I I think that you're probably uh, likely going to be better off just being stone sober, making perfect machine mechanical decisions, taking in all the information you can take in. But maybe for people that are lots, are very easily distracted, that maybe smoking and becoming more focused is uh, a, a plus EV thing for you? It could be. I don't know your life, but uh might be a true thing. That is a long email. <laughs> I'll put that one in another file. That <laughs> one's not for now. Uh, oh, there was one question I saw before when I was printing it out, and I really wanted to get to it. Oh, this one. <laughs> I saw this one, too. This one made me laugh. I'm excited to share this one with you guys. I didn't read all of it, but I read enough to make me laugh. I've got a question here. The question subject is, short question, not poker related, from a New Jersey run-it-up warrior. And I was like, oh, interesting. Who is this? Dear Jay Carver, first, <laughs> first sentence, I'm sorry for lying. <laughs> uh, but really, I'm not, if it means you read my question. That's right. You shouldn't be sorry for lying. I'm not from New Jersey. I'm from Australia. And I've put in a, quest I've put in a poker question, and it's not short. Capital, large font, XD. How can you beat that? That's right. That's what he did. <laughs> huh? Huh? That's what he did here. From a fellow named Lucas. Another A-level name. Tyler. Uh, what is the other one we're talking about? Dylan. Tyler Dylan Lucas. My three children's names. Cameron, actually, is the fourth one. I love those names. They're great names. I'm a very big fan of, of those names, which is... Partially why I read your question to begin with, to be honest. I have lots of questions, so pick and choose. Oh, how nice of you. Uh, who who would win in a fight between Lucky Chewy and Doyle Brunson? Uh, Lucky Chewy. I mean, you know, if we're talking about like a real fight in a cage, you know, or a ring. I mean, obviously, Doyle's, what is he, like 98 years old? I don't think he would win. He's tough, don't get me wrong, but you know. The guy's 21 in, in shape. Uh, obviously, he's going to be in better shape. Uh, he's going to be in better shape for fighting. However, if you just, like, randomly picked, like, Doyle right now and Lucky Chewy right now and put him in like, a in, like, an alley and said, you know, whoever leaves, you know, whoever lives wins, like, and that's, it's like a, it's like a, a fight to the death, I might take Doyle in that, you know? I bet you Doyle's pretty, pretty tough, all in all. Will Ultimate Poker become available down under? I hope so. I will be doing, uh, I, I hope it is because now, now that I've done the tour in Jersey, and I'll be doing more Jersey touring, but now that I've done that, now I expect to go anywhere we're launching a new place for. So we get into the UK, we'll do a UK tour, we'll do all bunch of things. It'll be exciting. So hopefully that will happen. Although I am considering going to Australia next year for poker. It's been like five years since I've went. I feel like it would be awesome, especially, what do you guys think, especially you Australian fans? What do you guys think if we did like some sort of like a, I don't know if we could do like a tournament or some sort of like hangout seminar type of thing in Melbourne. Is there enough like Australian uh, run it up fans that would attend to such a thing? Probably if we like planned it out, right? I think that would be awesome. I would love to do something like that. I have no experience. It could be awful. <laughs> I have no experience in a setting like that, but it could be pretty awesome. Uh, so this opponent re-raised pre-flop, bet flop, bet turn. We could have the best hand now. It's possible he could just have like ace queen with the ace of spades, or uh, it's possible he just has two red aces and we have a live spade draw and seven draw. Can't fold either way. If our opponent shoves a river, will probably be tend will probably be inclined to believe him, but we will see. Interesting river card. And our opponent is all in. So I think if our opponent had two black queens, he's more likely to check turn than to, sh than to bet turn. He did bet turn kind of small, though. 
I feel like I'm inclined to call. I mean, we lose to like ace queen with the queen of spades, ace jack with the jack of spades. We lose here a lot, but I feel like we win here often enough that we can call and it'll be okay. All right. Getting it done. I don't want to use the bink bell on the poor guy named Bink who is nice to us, so... I mean, this is a pretty solid, uh, that was a pretty solid pot for us, but... All right, all right. <laughs> no mercy, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. So we didn't have the best, tur the best hand on the turn, but uh, I think he played his hand pretty reasonably. I think he should have checked the river, though, because he gives us an opportunity to bluff. It gives us, uh, like, you know, if we have king-queen, if we have king-queen with no spade, are we going to call river, right? Probably not. If we're, are we going to call river with, like, a worse two pair? I don't know. I think you should probably should have just checked river and uh, given us an opportunity to bluff with hands that were worse. But all right, we got it done. We're on a heater. Nice question, Lucas. You've propelled us to running it up magic. That's right. When Run It Up hits 10K, you should definitely do the UFC dinner. Not a question. Just sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, do you think it's weird I've started hearing your voice when shit happens? Like when I'm playing. Like when I... <laughs> what are you, 12? Uh, do you think it's weird I've started hearing your voice when shit happens when I'm playing like when I drill it? I actually... Oh, okay. I added too many likes in there for you. Apparently. <laughs> I thought you were a 14-year-old girl there for a second. Do you think it's like weird I've started hearing your voice when shit happens and like when I'm playing and I drill it, I actually make a, a drill with my hand? <laughs> oh, all sorts of voices coming out today. I never did that one before. That was a new one. I liked it though. The little fourteen-year-old girl, like uh, the girl from the Kanye West workout plan song, you know, getting coming back over here. That's right. Huge Kanye West fan. In case you guys didn't know that, Kanye is amazing. He is. He is awesome. Uh, so do you think it's weird? No, I don't think it's that weird. If you've watched every video or whatever it is. Uh, anyway, if it goes longer, you won't read it. I read it. You got your way. It was a good email, Lucas. I started watching three weeks ago, and now I've watched every video you have uploaded. Jesus. <laughs> that is a lot of run it up. That is a lot of run it up. Three weeks ago. Jeez. Well, welcome to the team run it up. I uh, appreciate you hanging out. Great email, Lucas. You got it very quickly. And you gave us a pretty nice heater. Might be like one of the biggest pots we've ever run for run it up. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Another Australian fan, but not going to read that one. I might. I'm just not reading it for now. I'm about six weeks behind. Sorry. Uh, not saying sorry. I'm not reading your question, but that's pretty far. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's read this one. This is a good one. Dear Jay Carver, the subject is four short questions for a school project. Oh, well, maybe we can help you with your school project. <laughs> I uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you on your videos. Thank you. It's great. And uh, our friend here writes, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because you're underage. <laughs> uh, your name is Bart, and you're a 15-year-old student from the Netherlands. Uh, you're one of those. You're one of the European 15-year-old wizards that I'm always talking about. And a big fan of running up videos. I'm writing an assignment on gambling. And you have to interview an expert. Oh, hmm. well, here I are. I'm a gambling expert. Are you actually a gambling addiction? Uh, I don't know how much I can help you with that. I don't know how much I can help you with that. Look at this discipline, by the way. Look, 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 look at this one, kids. Two, three suited? No, thank you. Get out of here. No deuce three suited. The questions are all really basic, and, my, and all my classmates are 15 years old and don't know anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that seems very uh, wise of you to say that. So, let's see if we can't answer your school project. Bart, do you consider poker different compared to other gambling games, and why? Well, you know, poker is a game against other players. That's why you can win. Because if you're playing against the house, the house would never offer you a gambling game in which they are inherently going to lose. Otherwise, they wouldn't win, and that's the whole point of them existing, right? Poker, because they take a time charge, effectively, through rake. They can let you win because you're beating other people. That's why poker is different. What advice would you give someone 
not to become addicted to gambling. <laughs> is the advice just don't become addicted to gambling? Because that's pretty good advice right there. Four or six diamonds. I think you should just gamble responsibly. You know what I mean? That's the real answer. Gamble responsibly within your limits. Know when to quit. You know, I think poker is a great vehicle for gambling because it's not really gambling. There's obviously an element of luck involved, but it's a strategy mind game trying to outwit, outplay, outsolve your opponents. You know, I think uh, that's why poker is a wonderful, beautiful game. Could check raise here. That would be fine. Could also just call. I think the best thing to do here is probably to check raise. Uh, we can get this guy out of the pot a good percentage of the time. We obviously have six highs, so pretty often, you know, we're going to get better hands to fold. And uh, if he folds, this guy calls, club comes, we can bet that. That would be great. If this guy gets, gets it in with us, who cares? Whatever, you know, run the cards dealer. Who cares? And in this case, we won $10 post-flop plus all the pre-flop raises. No showdown, no pain, just got in there. Gave him the old, the old elbow, and that's it. So, you know, if you're the type of person that gets ad addicted to things very easily, you should just avoid casino gambling. You know what I mean? You should treat it like a business. Be, you know, you should treat it like a, like a business and be serious. Or if it's a hobby, treat it like a hobby. You just want to be mentally alert and aware in what you're doing at all times. And I think you'll be all right. Oh, I just had a panic attack that the audio wasn't recording. Ha! <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun, this video, so that would be really sad. How could I re-put all this back together? It would be lost. It would be... Poor Bink would have lost that big pot for nothing. Do I think uh, casinos are trying to make people addicted? No, I don't think so. Although I, although I, I am... Sh you know, I, I don't know. It depends on... <laughs> that's right. It is a cat avatar. That is right. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that's necessarily the case. However, I think that, uh, you know, most, most casinos, most casinos, uh, exist in such a way where they obviously, they want patrons and customers, but no one wants to be hurt too badly. Like, I'm sure there are ruthless people out there, just like there are in any business that, uh, that would feel otherwise. But, uh, I think that for the most part, people just want to, you know, uh, you know, you offer gambling games, uh, you're a free person, can make your free decisions, not until you're an adult, obviously. But I think, you know, at that po at this point, it's gambling is a fun thing to do. It's a fun activity, just like there are plenty of other things that, you know, I think people just have the option to pursue if they want. That was kind of a weird answer to your question. But the answer, the short answer is I don't think that's true. Uh, have you ever been personally addicted to gambling or been close to addicted? Nope. I don't think so. I mean, you know, I feel like you could argue it at some point. At one point, I did take like a, you know, are you addicted to gambling quiz? And I'm not making fun of being addicted to gambling. Obviously, it's a serious condition or, you know, situation or whatever. Like, it's something that's a serious, real, legit thing and, you know, all that. However, I took a quiz to see if, you know, just for like the fun of trying. And it was like if you got seven out of the 20 questions right or 10 out of the 20 questions right, you were probably a gambling addict. And I got like 17 of them right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's unfair. I'm a professional gambler. You know what I mean? Like questions like, have you ever lost, you know, more money than you would have liked in a night? <laughs> yes, of course. You know, like, so it's not exactly fair for professional gamblers like myself. But uh, I don't think I've ever been addicted to gambling, although I do enjoy it quite a bit. So, yeah, there we go. You wrote a very nice, perfect English. Oh, you're, wow, we're way ahead of deadline, too. That's great gonna just call here I don't love this but I don't really want to raise get it in and I think I'm okay with putting this in my calling pile kind of a scary river card but not like super super scary I mean we lose to 7-8 which we were already losing to we lose to 6-7 which we weren't losing to but weren't in great shape against if he bombs it here I'll be sad but not sad enough to fold for $18. I think often enough he'll just have like ace 10, something weird, ace 6 of hearts. Like we lose here a good percentage of the time, but not that good percentage of the time. You know what I mean? Let's see the cards, boys. 10-9, not the best hand, I'm afraid. Too poor. Well, w well written email. The Netherlands, another place high on my list of places to visit. I would love to, would love to do that someday. Never been there. I've actually never been to mainland Europe outside of Monte Carlo, a little bit of France, and obviously I've been to London, but besides that, all right, let's pull a question. 
<laughs> oh, this is a great email. This is a great email, but I don't want to read this right now. This requires way too much effort. I'm very excited to read that email in the next couple of days, though. You might win, actually. Lucas, uh, let's, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I pull any other ones. But I think Lucas is our top contender for our 1%. You know, we'll give Lucas a 1% free roll, I think. How do we not? That was a great email. We went on a heater. 1% for Lucas, probably top contender. Let's see if he gets bad beated here, depending on how long the video goes. Uh, Dear Jay Carver, do you celebrate Hanukkah? If so, will you be lighting up a run? <laughs> will you be lighting a run at up menorah for your Jewish friends? Happy Mazel Tov, Sam Dean. Nope, unfortunately, I grew up on Long Island, but I am not Jewish. I have lots of Jewish friends, but I'm not Jewish. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I am not Jewish. I, if I was home a week ago, I would have put a menorah up. We would have done a whole thing. Just wait till you guys see next week. <laughs> Just wait. Just wait until you see the next week thing. Oh, this is weird. All right. No, thank you. Invitation to join Dropbox. Thanks for that. Thank you. Oh. Dear Jay Carver, ka-ching, points. And i nice, glad that you wrote that. <laughs> All right. How, dear Jay Carver, how do you manage to be so adorable day after day? <laughs> I really enjoy your sense of humor and find your videos not only informative but quite entertaining. Keep up the good work. Amy. Oh, well, thank you, Amy. I don't know. I don't know. How does it happen? I feel like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. I appreciate your uh, your adorable writing to me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know, you're not you're not usually you're you're likely not my demographic, but you know, hey, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm less adorable with this beard that I have going on here. Everyone shaved at the end of November, and I was like, this is a great time. Let's grow a beard. I want to have a I want to have a beard like you know, a uh, real beard. Let's do a Conor McGregor beard. You know, I doubt that will happen, but uh, you know, maybe. Thank you. That was awesome. Oh boy, how did all these emails get in there that I did not really? I've already read. I actually have read a couple of these before, which is crazy. Uh, race, three dollars. Uh, da da do 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 do. Oh. <laughs> Uh, dear Jay Carver, what do you think about your Rye of Faber? And will the fans get more glimpses of the great, great, great grandfather, Jay Carver? <laughs> uh, I would love for a great, great, great grandfather, Jay Carver, to appear. As you guys may recall, I told the story about, it might not, it might not be true, but I'm going to believe that it is true, that I have an ancestor in Italy who had lots of, he had an estate in Italy, and uh, gambled it all away like 500 years ago. <laughs> so that's the story my grandparents told me. But I don't really know how true that is. And they've only said it to me once, which makes me even more dubious. All right, let's call here. I've got some plans for non-heart rivers, although heart would have been plan A. You know, like what do you got over there? You check call, bet turn. Come on, you know, what, uh, what's the story you're trying to tell me here, kid? You know, you're trying to tell me you have king, queen? Doubt it. That's hard to have. It would be funny if our opponent checks of all the times that he hasn't. Now, <laughs> now he bets it. Okay, you got it, guy. You got it. It's all you. I mean, you know, he could definitely be bluffing us, but, you know, probably not off seven high. But uh, I love your Uriah Faber. Uriah is great. I think he's done a great job this year, done an amazing job with his career, generally speaking. And, uh, you know, all of that. So many good questions here. So many good questions here. Another, uh, wow, back to back, Australian fan, Netherlands fan. Oh, so many greetings from Canada. Oh, my God. Dear Jay Carver, did you know that when you make the peace sign at the end of your videos, it is actually a fuck you for British people? I don't know. Is that true, British people? Is that true? Uh, we turn our palm outward for peace. Like that? Is that a real thing? <laughs> and you signed off by saying, I don't have a castle, sorry. <laughs> sorry, apology accepted, Marcus. Is that a real thing, British people? 
Anyway, we're in uh, Nevada, basically, for these videos. It doesn't matter what we do. We, we say peace here. That's what we do. That's what we do. We go deuces. Right? That's what we do. Chalking up the deuces. <laughs> Whatever you say, Jay Carver. Huh. Uh. <laughs> no, right? Another question about smoking. Question, do you smoke? Not cigarettes. It's not, I don't know what I just said. The question's only about smoking. That's it. You know? Uh, I'm not going to lie. The answer, is, the answer is no to smoking cigarettes. Dear Jay of the Carvers, with the holiday season rolling around, what is the best... I wouldn't have read your email, by the way, if I saw your subject. Your subject is answer my question. Answer my question! But I already started, so I'll finish. Dear Jay of the Carvers, with the holiday season rolling around, what is the best and worst Christmas gifts you've ever gotten? Answer, or you'll be cursed with Christmas misfortune for the next seven years. Matt. I'm really glad you limited it to seven years, though. So 2012, 2020 will be a great Christmas for me. But till then, it's going to suck if I didn't answer your question, which I'm doing anyway. <laughs> uh, that would be one way to do it. Uh, best and worst Christmas gifts. I gotta say, my parents were always really good with Christmas gifts, generally speaking. Christmas was always an amazing holiday where my parents went nuts and spent way too much money on me and my sister. It was crazy. Piles and piles of gifts. Insane. You know, we got, I got new computers once every, like, three years, and uh, uh, my parents were amazing for Christmas. I, I had amazing Christmases growing up, and thus, when I do gift give to people around Christmas time, and it's not very many people, it's a hard list to get on, but uh, I feel like I put a lot of effort into Christmas gift giving, you know? I feel I have a very high dollar per person, uh, you know, I, I don't do mass gift giving, but I like finding great gifts for people. Throughout the entire year, I this is true actually. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I I try to like remember. Be like, hmm, is there a possibility that I have to give this person the gift at some point in my life? And I go, well, wouldn't it be great to give them this ridiculous gift on Christmas? So there's a couple people that I you know, I feel like I've got some good ideas for this year who don't even know that I'm getting them gifts yet. But it's very limited. The list is very very limited. But I don't think I have great answers for you to be honest. In the last five years, I've given some pretty good Christmas gifts to my family members, but uh, I don't think I can remember a particularly good or bad one in my life. You know, besides like the, they're all pretty awesome. Oh, we're getting <laughs> getting a live question. Oh, this is weird and different. It's because I'm playing at midnight instead of four in the morning, I guess. In your next video, aka the one I'm doing right this minute, I guess. Could you explain why you never move seats on the same table if you realize you're getting sandwiched between two aggressive players? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I don't like moving seats. Our sessions are pretty small. If we're in a bad situation, we talk about it anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's helpful to you guys to see how I adapt to people around me. Even if I don't, like, legitimately talk about, like, oh, well, we're going to do this because this and this because this and then we're here and whatever. Like, I think that... Uh, if you really want to watch and see like what I do, how I adjust the bet sizing, how I adjust my continuation bet percentages and all that other stuff. Like I think that if you watch these videos seriously, I think you'll learn that. And because these sessions are so small, I just don't bother. You know, it's fine. Put me in the cage. I, I enter your cage. Whatever. I guess our little check raise bluff here didn't work. Pretty good spot for us check raise though, because there are so many good turn cards. Queen, ten, king, nine, spade. Lots of good turn, lots of good turn cards for us. But it looks like our opponent decided not to give us any credit, which is all right. So there you go. <laughs> oh, so many words, but you have the question bolded. But you know. Oh, a question from a Tyler. I'm actually inclined to read it, but you know. We want to give Lucas some stress here, right? So, it's another good question. God, there are so many good questions in here. <laughs> All right. I got to read this one. This was a good one, too. To my dearest Jay Carver. <laughs> Subject is all caps. This is a grabby title you can't ignore. All right. I didn't even read it. Uh, I just went right to it. 
To my dearest Jake Harver, big fan, blah, blah, blah. I'm glad you wrote that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what seven things? Again, seven. Very dedicated to having seven things. What seven things would you want with you if you are stranded on a desert island? For example, knife, rope, Selena Gomez CD, etc. From your biggest fan in San Francisco, Adrian. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, seven things you would want with you. I feel like I would like to consult a survivalist expert to determine, like, I probably need four or five utility things, right? I mean, things like a cell phone or, like, a satellite phone. Seems like a good thing to have if I'm stranded on a desert island. Are those sort of things okay? Could I ask for, like, a genie? <laughs> Is that okay? Can I loop the system that way? Uh, but uh, I'll keep with your reasonable parameters and say, let's say I do four utility things. You know, I feel like you'd probably need a, what's the best, what's the best highest tech technology for matches these days? Whatever that is. So it's probably not matches. I'm sure there's some technological wizardry thing that is, sets fire. That seems like a cool thing. Maybe you'd want some sort of uh, uh, hunting device, right? Fishing, hunting device. Certainly would require a knife. I think that would be a pretty default standard thing. And uh, as far as like entertainment goes, boy, I mean, being by myself, so many of the things that I would like to do re revolve around other people. <laughs> uh, I guess I would like to have a, a couple of books. I guess I don't know, man. Can I can I ask for a like? Like an Xbox, at least. <laughs> Something like that. Somebody to gamble with for, like, coconuts. I don't know. It's tough. I, I, I wouldn't do good in that scenario. That's not, that's not a scenario that does great for me. Uh, I'm going to bet and not fold. If uh, Bink comes into town, I'll be most unhappy. If this premier guy goes to town, you know, whatever. $78, I re-raise. Actually, I think he limp called. If Bink goes nuts, I would have been concerned and might have slowed down a little bit, but Queen is a pretty good card for us. We only lose now to Queen Jack, Queen Ten, stuff like that. I think I'm going to bet here twice. Often enough, he has a Ten, doesn't fold, Jack Ten, Jack Nine, stuff like that. Not going to bet a ton because I want him to call. Eighteen seems like a good, good mount. If he check raises us, we have kind of a tough decision, but... No check raise here. Slightly scary river card, but I'm not too scared. We lose to flushes and 7-8. So the question is now, if we bet, 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 is there any chance he's going to call us with worse? Right, so what's the next worst hand than ours, right? Ace-10. Ace-10 might call us. It's, it might, but it might fold. And when you get much weaker than that, you know, King-10, Jack-10, after that, I don't think there's too much value here. And even though I'm pretty confident that we're ahead more often than not, I think I'm going to just check back. We lose more, most often here to a queen if we lose this hand, but, uh, okay. That was a very reasonably, well, reasonably played hand of poker by all parties, in my opinion. All right. I, uh... All right, I won't do that. I was going to do a earlier edit thing that I didn't do. <laughs> so I, I think it's this video at this point has been long enough that I'm not going to do an extra piece of it. But I think that... Uh, oh. <laughs> Short and sweet question from New Zealand from Andy. That's right. Look at that. It's like a angry SpongeBob-like character. And me. <laughs> Sure, sure it is. <laughs> TJ Curver, if you could go back in time and play in poker in the Wild West, would you? I'm sure the games were soft as shit, but also very scary. Then we'd see if you could dodge all sorts of bullets. Yes, that's true. I'm sure putting people in the cage meant something a whole lot sinister that then. Yes, that is true. A whole lot more sinister. All right, says Andy. Please come down. Biggest fan from New Zealand. Please come down and visit the most beautiful country in the world. We'd love to have you. I'd love to visit. I would love to visit New Zealand. Obviously, that would be another great, a great stop on the on the run it up world tour. Okay. Oh, two interesting questions on back to back here. This will be the last orbit of this video, though. Uh, Lucas still our still our equity leader. I think he'd be hard to beat it. Not only did we run hot while you were answering a question, he had a good question written out. It was pretty funny. You know, assuming you're over the age of 21, right? Do you have to be over 21? 
I don't know. Maybe I'll just buy you an Xbox game or something. Is that weird too? I don't want to. I don't want to buy like <laughs> Jay Carver's buying fifteen-year-olds Xbox games. I don't really want to do that either. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully you're just twenty-one and that's not a problem. Or eighteen maybe is even fine. And you're, I I don't know. How does gambling tournament equities work? I don't know. I'll think about it. But uh, you should email me, Lucas, <laughs> and uh, if you're going to be the winner, and we'll figure that out. I don't know. I'm sure it's fine. Whatever. We'll figure that out. Uh, nah, not in the mood. Not even a, that, that was even a non-poker question. Not in the mood. I'm pretty much done here with these Dear J. Carver emails for now. They were awesome, though. These were awesome, Dear J. Carvers. We have got a lot a lot to try to get through in the next couple of days, but I'm excited. Long videos. This will be a great week. I'm not even sure I'm going to do a, a guest uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, for you. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm going to do a guest tomorrow because I've been, uh, I want to run it up. Let's uh, get on a heater, try to put some stuff together. You know what I mean? You uh, know what I mean? I think, uh, I think I'm just going to probably play five run it ups this week and just, just, uh, just do it. Do it to it. Ah, Quinella, our old friend. We'll get to play three hands with Quinella. Something like that. Assuming he posts. I got a uh I got an Xbox One by the way. I gotta say, don't love the idea of having a camera always on in my living room. I find that to be quite in fact extremely uncomfortable and I have disconnected it as soon as I set it up. Uh I find that to be very un un unattractive to me. There's an always-on camera who knows what I look like, and I do not like that one bit. That, that that I do not like. I cover up all my cameras here when I'm done. If I could, I would unplug every single thing. I can't, obviously. But if I could, I would. I, I don't like that idea. I, I feel very uncomfortable about that, generally speaking. All right. On that, on that note, <laughs> we ran it up. Big win, $190 for the team here today, probably up to right around $1,720, give or take. I mean, maybe it's like $1,700 is my guess, somewhere right around there. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget, comment in the comments below. I love those things. It makes me happy when I know you guys are happy. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about that. Don't forget, facebook.com slash jcarpoker. You can add me as a friend. I will accept you. I accept everybody, so I will accept you. Don't worry. No rejection. You're completely immune to rejection unless you have, you know, I'll reject. Maybe, you know, it, it, would, it would take some work to be rejected. So facebook.com slash jcarpoker for more stuff like that and uh, for all your social media needs on the interwebs. And I think that is it for me. I will see you guys back for more very soon tomorrow. And, God, I thought there was something else I was going to say. Oh, Lucas, our 1% winner, officially. That's right. Congratulations, Lucas. If you have other ideas for me, don't forget, let me know those too. But uh, for, t for today, no matter what we pick, I'll give 1% to Lucas. Let's win, Lucas. Let's run it up together. Hopefully you're not 12 years old. Anyway, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will see you guys back for more tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Glad to be back, everybody. All right. That's, uh, there we go. All right, all that just to say goodbye. <laughs> oh my god, look how unshaven this is. This is crazy. Someone needs to buy me a razor. I need to shave it up. All right. <laughs> On that lovely note, peace.